Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, I just kicked out some visitors here a little while ago. Um, Chuck, uh, Carl, and Flea Market Dave came up today and um, we had our, um, I would call it our first uh, inaugural um, TA meeting and that would be a Toolaholics Anonymous. <laughs> and uh, we were joking around about it and uh, so the purpose of uh, TA is to, uh, it's not to cure each other of, uh, of tool collecting, but to encourage each other for tool collecting and machine buying. So uh, it's a kind of an anti, uh, <laughs> anti-cure thing. So uh, anyway, uh, we went over and visited Andy and looked at his shop and uh, that was pretty cool. And um, uh, had some good fun. So Chuck, thanks for coming up. Uh, Carl, always nice to see you. And Flea Market Dave, uh, uh, we're coming to your place next. So uh, he's got containers full of stuff, so I'm told. So um, got a little viewer appreciation. Um, got a little Craigslist find, a little tool find on Craigslist that we're going to share. Um, got a couple of hammers we're going to doll up. Um, so it's just kind of a mix of subjects. And let's go over to the table. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these things. and and uh, gives these hammers a little spot treatment so okay so this is a, a combination of viewer appreciation uh, stuff here and um, actually uh, some Craigslist finds so uh, and there's a little story with each one of these actually so it's kind of um, kind of fun so I don't know where should I start? Um, let's start with this one here. This is actually pretty cool. Um, and, and you guys know how much I like hammers. Uh, my friend Andy, uh, the owner of VPI Machine here uh, in town, he, uh, he has a bunch of these uh, uh, Talon, Talon hammers, and I'll put the name up on the screen there for you. Um, and what these are, are these are steel-faced dead blow hammers. So it's it's got lead shot in it, and um, but it's got a, a, a steel face. Now these these faces are a little chowdered up here, and uh, we're going to try our new uh, a variable speed Bosch grinder, and we'll see if we can uh, tune those up and get them real nice. But it's kind of interesting. Um, the white tape here, the handle had a little tiny crack in the edge, and there was a piece ready to kind of pop out. So I put a little wood glue on it, and this is just kind of clamping it. So uh, it looks like an original handle, and that handle's pretty cool. It's got some, uh, got some waist on it. The handle's got some hips on it. I, that's what I always say. Anyway, uh, these things, they don't bounce, and, uh, but it's a steel face. So this looks like a, a hammer that transmits all its energy, uh, but with a hard face, too. So uh, kind of nice. Um, anyway, thank you, Andy. That was, that's cool. Um, we got this one here, and I'm going to zoom in on all this stuff so you guys can see it. Uh, this is from uh, Dana Gray uh, at Carlson Rod, uh, he makes uh, high-end uh, fly rods, and um, he sent me a little package recently with some stuff in it, and, uh, uh, but he sent this separately because he didn't want to get a damage, and it's a little, it's a little brown and sharp uh, inside micrometer, and uh, um, I was playing around with it a little bit, and I, I did a little cleaning on it just so you, so it looks good. And it's in this just wonderful purple velvet uh, brown and sharp case. So we'll uh, we'll take a look at that in a sec. We'll get closer to that. Um, and this is uh, this is my one of my power viewers here. Uh, this is Gordon Melby uh, down in uh, Arizona, and I actually met Gordon uh, face to face. We went to the Titan Missile Museum and. Uh, and poked around the old missile silo there and uh, looked at some of the hardware. Anyway, Gordon's a, he's a cool cat and, uh, um, and met us there and uh, hooked us up with some uh, free passes since he's a docent. Anyway, he sent me a, uh, it's actually kind of an interesting little nut driver um, and it's got removable uh, um, sockets on it, but then they keep the spare sockets on the shank, which I thought was kind of clever. Um, by the way, this uh, is a quarter inch hex and it fits in my Makita driver too, which is kind of nice. Um, so kind of interesting, I haven't seen one like that before. And then I think this is some kind of Arizona to California joke here. Uh, it's a sandbag. So I guess he's uh, 
He sent in sandbags in case uh, I need to uh, shore up for flooding or something like that. So I think Gordon's playing a little uh, playing a little joke on me there. So anyway, thanks Gordon. Appreciate that stuff and uh, and it was nice to meet you too. And we'll see you again when we come down in February. So um, now this guy here. Um, I'm gonna let me change the camera a little bit, and then uh, we'll come in a little bit closer so you can get, see this uh, this little uh, uh, catch here, and uh, and then uh, we'll zoom in nice and tight, and you guys can see these tools up close because there's some there's some kind of neat stuff here, so we'll check it out. <clears throat> okay, so the story here on this little lot is um, I was. Uh, um, I don't know, I was looking around on Craigslist, I don't know what for. Um, and I was looking in the tool section and uh, this, uh, there was a listing for a Lufkin micrometer. And this is a Lufkin micrometer here. And this happens to be the Lufkin micrometer that was listed. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Mitch Rosen, uh, he's, the, he's the leather guy. He does all the, uh, the cool leather work and makes the aprons and, and all that stuff. He was, uh, he's been shopping for some, uh, some larger micrometers over, over one to two, you know, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, stuff like that. And he was going, you know, he's looking at the new Starrett's and, you know, they're 300 bucks or 280 bucks or something like that. And uh, I said, well, hey, take a look on eBay. Um, Lufkins are really nice micrometers, okay, and the, the newer ones with, the satin chrome uh, barrels. Um, you know, Lufkin made several configurations. Um, this is a, a 1945, uh, number 1945, and it's a four to five. Um, anyway, this listing popped up and uh, 20 bucks. And uh, so I emailed the guy and I said, hey, you still got it, uh, kind of come and look at it. And uh, so he was there. So I went over and took a look at it and stuff. Well, it turns out that he's selling a bunch of stuff that uh, was his dad's and his uncle's. And, um, and I said, well, hey, when you get organized, uh, give me a call or something like that. And I was going to give him a card. And he said, hey, well, while you're here, why don't you look through? And I go, twist my arm, right? So, uh, you know, I always love to look at tools. So anyway, I went through the, uh, there was a roll away and I kind of went through the roll away and, uh, and poked around in there. Anyway, this is, this is the stuff that I got. Um, so once again, I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see some of this stuff. So that's kind of the story. Uh, and this gentleman, uh, his name was Paul. Uh, he's a very nice guy, uh, electrician, he used to work for Mare Island. And um, he's just, uh, you know, his parents are quite old now, so he's just starting to clear out. And uh, he is not he's not a machinist and he has no use for this stuff. So uh, he's just kind of uh, making it go away. Anyway, uh, um, he made me a great deal on all this stuff and uh, we got to talking about uh, uh, tools and work and things like that. So it was, it was, it was a good, a positive uh, experience for both of us. So anyway, let me change the camera around. We'll get in, uh, get in close and uh, you guys can see some of this stuff and we'll talk about uh, some of the individual things here and, uh, and uh, some of the viewer appreciation stuff and we'll, we'll check that out. Okay, so here's the, um, this is from uh, Dana Gray. This is this, um, uh, and there's his name right there. And uh, he uh, owns a Carlson Rod Company in Massachusetts. Uh, check out Carlson Rod. Uh, if you guys are a fly fisherman, um, Dana makes uh, handmade uh, fly rods. So check it out. Anyway, uh, Dana sent me a, a little gift here, which is really kind of neat. Um, the, the box is pristine here. It's in really good shape and uh, you open it up and it's got this purple purple velvet and what it is is it's a little um, um, inside micrometer. Okay, so when it's fully closed, it's about an inch and a half long and then release this and the knobs are all there. A lot of times these little things get lost. Now it's got a little stiff spot in it, but uh, uh, it's still it's still workable. Let me make sure I get it released there. Yeah, and it extends out. Hopefully you guys can see that little graduations there. 
and it's got like a quarter inch range or something uh, yeah quarter inch range and uh, you know I checked the index uh, I ran it all the way in and set it at zero and I checked it with a micrometer and it's like spot on and this thing's been sitting in this box for for who knows how many years anyway it's got this cool little flexor uh, locking mechanisms there's a little black bra brass strip underneath there that pushes down on the on the rotating thimble or barrel and uh, and then this little screw here locks this so you can take this out and then it's got a little spacer here to uh, um, add another what quarter inch or something like that is that what that is yeah it adds another quarter inch so when this is on there uh, when it's fully closed that's an uh, inch and a half um, and uh, then with that that's inch and three quarter plus a quarter so anyway um, anyway nice little micrometer Dana thank you very much uh, this is pretty cool and um, now you you generally use these uh, um, you, you put them down in a bore and then you adjust them out in the bore and then what I like to do with them is take them out and then I measure over the outside of these with a micrometer because um, most of the time you're fitting the male part to a bore and you're using the outside mic anyway uh, and then you don't have to worry about uh, calibration stuff. Anyway, Dana, thank you very much. It's very cool and uh, um, nice little gift. Thank you. Okay, so this is uh, this is my uh, power viewer, uh, Gordon Melby. <laughs> um, he sent me this little nut driver, which is pretty cool. So um, the handle's not. Uh, it's just a wood handle. Um, what does it say here? Got a name on it here. It does. It's got a little name on it. I can't quite read it. Um, anyway, this is the more interesting part, I think. So it's quarter inch hex, and it's got sockets on it that also have a quarter inch hex through them. And then um, when you pull this off, there's a <laughs> there's even a little screwdriver blade and a little ball detent. Um, but they're all captured on there. So if you want to change them. You know you can you can swap it out and go to the next go to the big size there and then you know this is kind of a keeper for the rest of it so uh, now this also happens to fit um, my little driver here so now now it's starting to be a little more interesting it might be yeah that thing might be bent a little bit might have to straighten that a little looks like it's got a little bend right there okay anyway we'll uh, we'll uh, We'll fix that. But uh, uh, just a different kind of configuration. Haven't seen one like that before. Gordon, thanks very much. Uh, um, so if you want to carry some nut drivers with you and you don't want to carry uh, four of them or whatever, um, uh, you can just carry one and it takes up the same room. And then here's a sandbag, you know. Um, I don't know what, it, I'll probably ship something to Adam in that. That's uh, where that'll end up. Anyway, Gordon, thank you very much. All right, so this is this, um, uh, Talon uh, hammer from uh, Andy over at VPI machine and there's the name there hopefully you can see that and I'll put the name on the uh, on the screen here um, so it it's cast uh, cast steel or forged steel probably cast um, and uh, I don't know that's about three pounds something like oh yeah it's three pounds <laughs> um, this will this is actually, I started thinking about it, this would make a really good project here. So, you know, a piece of heavy wall tubing, you machine some ends, weld them on, uh, a, a handle section here, right? Uh, fit a handle to it, this could all be welded. And then you fill it up with lead shot and then uh, maybe seal it with a little epoxy or something like that and then insert a handle in it and now you got a steel face dead blow uh, that you made yourself so that could make a that could make a really good uh, a really good project let's see this is probably dry enough I can probably take this off carefully get a, get a look at the the whole handle here it's taking a little of the paint off this is this gaffers tape uh, this stuff's uh, incredibly strong This is cloth gaffers tape. Yeah, oh, there's some of my patina right there. <laughs> but you can see the handle's got, she's got some hips to her right there. 
it's just it's just a nice looking handle and uh, um, Andy had a full set of these down from pretty small to I think this was the biggest one anyway he had two of the big ones so he uh, he was uh, he took pity on my hammer fetish and uh, and hooked me up with uh, one of the big ones there so yeah maybe that's a good one uh, we'll make some smaller ones uh, at some point that uh, might make a nice project anyway Andy thank you very much that was cool and uh, you know I can't resist a uh, uh, I can't resist a hammer ever okay so here's this is this uh, Craigslist lot that I got and um, you know, before we get started going through it, uh, Paul, um, thank you very much. You, you made me a really nice deal on this. Um, for this whole lot here was uh, was eighty dollars or eighty or eighty-five dollars, um, and uh, uh, w which is a real nice price. Okay, um, you know, he was happy and I was happy, so uh, uh, it was one of those kind of perfect Craigslist experiences. So let's kind of go through this stuff. Uh, there's some interesting bits here. I'm going to start with this just to get some of the bigger things out of the way. This is a 100-foot uh, tape measure, and it's a metal. It's not cloth. It's metal. And I don't think this thing's ever, ever been used. Um, look at the numerals on there. It's just, it's flawless. Um, and uh, the, it's got a, like a lacquer coating on it. And usually this end is all chowdered up, you know, the, the first couple of feet. But uh, it's, it's, it's pretty perfect, so um, it winds up. And that little button you can push to pop it open. And this is a Lufkin, it's real nice uh, instruction sheet, um, in case you're not sure how to use it. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, moving along here, um, it's a little one inch micrometer. Um, this one I took it apart because it was having problems with the, the friction thimble here and it's still having problems with the th friction thimble. It was rusty so I'm working on this one. Um, that's a 230, 230F um, Starrett. Um, you know it seems to work fine but uh, well, like I said there was the th friction thimble was kind of gummy and I took the spring out and I was having a hard time getting it back in there so I'm fussing around with that. Um, this is a little uh, uh, part of a depth gauge. We couldn't find the, the ruler that goes with this, but this is a Lufkin here, and uh, uses a little narrow rule. I have a couple rules that will fit this. Um, it's intact with the knob and the little retainer thing, and uh, it's in pretty good shape. So uh, uh, those are always nice little depth gauge uh, guys, okay? And then, um, this is some Starrett calipers, and then these have, um, um, they're not missing the knobs. You know, a lot of times these go, these go missing here. Now this one has a fine adjust, so you can lock this down, and then you can adjust this to do, to do a fine adjust there, which is kind of nice, you know, when you're, when, you're, uh, when you're gauging something there. And this is, a, this is kind of a, I would call it a, uh, a friendly size, you know. Um, easy to handle and uh, you know it opens up pretty big too so and those are what uh, I don't see the model number on that it's a Starrett but I, I don't see the model number you know they're about six inch I guess uh, is what you'd call those so 150 millimeter okay all right then uh, a couple of little chisels this is PNC uh, small chisel this one needs to be touched up but uh, um, Always nice to have a little snap on uh, center punch here, or at least uh, it's ground for a center punch. Uh, three ace PPC four, I think. Prick punch center or punch punch center. I don't know. I don't know what that abbreviation is. Uh, looks pretty good. It even uh, doesn't look like it's been hit too many times because it's there's still uh, circular marks around the end there. Uh, so I don't think that's so much use. Uh, then these are cool. I really kind of like these. These are old snap-on here, and they're very fine tip. Um, I don't even know if they would call these needle nose, um, needle beak or something. Uh, 60 C's. Um, these were pretty heavily used. Uh, the serrations are kind of worn, and these tips were bent a little bit. But I straightened them so they uh, so they meet up a little bit better. Um, 
you know, it's got a little play in the uh, in the hinge there too, but uh, you, you can peen that a little bit and tighten them up. I just kind of like the shape. Um, and when I was, I was doing some uh, broken tap uh, stuff the other day and I could have used some uh, some stronger, smaller tipped pliers. So anyway, those are, those are kind of neat. Um, this is cool. It's a plum uh, flare nut wrench, three quarter. So this fits uh, a lot of stuff around the shop um, and uh, it's just nice. Uh, and I think this is the little pebble finish they call it. Um, anyway, flare nut wrench, old school. Um, let me, uh, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit and then we'll go through the rest of this. Okay, so um, this is a, an interesting tap wrench. This is a PNC. Uh, which is a, I believe, a Los Angeles company. Um, did I say Los Angeles? No, I didn't say that. Um, I, I just have it in my head that that was a Los Angeles company. Um, um, and I believe that uh, somehow these guys got linked up. I, I can't quite remember the history. Uh, Plum bought these guys or vice versa or something like that. Uh, so there's some history there. Um, this one's kind of interesting because it has these ball tips on it, which you don't see very often. Uh, and this, you know, a lot of times these rods are missing uh, for that very reason, is there's no retentive feature uh, that keeps you from losing it. I don't think this thing was ever used. Um, the neural is pretty sharp. Those are sharp. Uh, the handle's not bent. Um, so if it was used, it was used lightly. Um, anyway, just caught my attention. It's quarter to half inch uh, tap size. And um, uh, with those ball ends, I kind of like it. So I'll clean that up. That'll look pretty good uh, when it's cleaned up. Um, then there's this little sweetheart here. So this was, uh, <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't resist this little guy. And, it, and this is real old. Um, and in fact, Paul mentioned, he says, he remembers seeing this when he was a little kid. And uh, so this is around 1945, somewhere in there. Um, and it's a... Um, her brand. Um, here's the name right here. Uh, H-E-R-B-R-A-N-D, uh, made in the USA. Uh, looks like it's got, I don't know if that's original paint or not. The handle is original. And you know, it's still tight and it's not cracked. And once again, it's got a little bit of wasting. Um, uh, not like wasting away, but waste like hips and, um, and belly, right? Um, which I, I just like that pleasing shape there. Um, and you can tell here because the grind marks where they, where they flush that up with that, they run straight across the wedge. So all that's aligned still. It's not, uh, it hasn't been changed around. Um, get some, uh, looks like the weasels were there. Got some snot on it. Um, Anyway, that's a little cutie, and uh, we'll uh, we'll doll that one up. We'll give it the uh, the spa treatment, the hammer spa treatment, and that's about a a two ounce hammer or something like that. It's just a little little sweetheart, so that's going in the collection. And um, um, oh yeah, two, so it's probably a two ounce. So uh, anyway, cool little hammer. Then um, big chisel, another PNC. Um, Pretty long. Um, this one looks like it saw a little bit of use. Uh, this is kind of nice, nice and long. You can get two hands on it, and somebody else can hit it. <laughs> um, and you know, I don't know. I I like chisels, and um, uh, whenever I see them, I, I usually buy them. So uh, if they're if they're name brand and decent, so I would expect this one to be pretty hard. Uh, unlike new chisel, new cold chisels, which are kind of soft. So. Uh, Okay, moving along. Um, let's get this out of the way here. So this is the, the close-up of this micrometer. And these are the nice uh, Lufkin. And Lufkin had just wonderful satin chrome. They did a really nice job with the satin chrome and these large diameter barrels. And this is a uh, um, friction thimble here. Their locks are really nice. And you've got a little knurled thing there. And uh, I checked this one with a standard. This has been sitting in a drawer for, for 30 years or plus, and it's spot on. I didn't have to adjust it. I checked it against one of my, uh, my five inch standard, and it's, it's dead nuts. Uh, so no adjustment necessary. 
So these things are pretty stables. Anyway, that one's going. Uh, uh, that one's going to Mitch Rosen. So Mitch, if you happen to catch this video, uh, if a little box shows up, uh, be sure to open it up because uh, that'll be in there. <laughs> um, all right. Then we got these guys here. These are pretty cool. These are our torque wrenches here, and uh, these are old school torque wrenches. And uh, these are these torque meters, and uh, this. You know, I should have looked a little harder. There might have been the quarter inch drive ones. This is half, three eighths. Um, and this one goes to, what does this go to? Uh, 150 inch pounds. And this one goes to uh, 150 foot pounds. Uh, and they, they, still, they still work fine. Although, maybe, anyway, I can't turn it very well uh, just by hand. And of course, I don't have a crescent wrench handy uh, to do it. But uh, uh, it's a cast aluminum. Um, it's a beam type that has a little uh, multiplier down at the end here. Um, anyway, uh, they seem to be nice. This one has uh, the original box still. I haven't looked at the instructions. And uh, oh, that's pretty cool. There's a Johnny Mechanic guy there. Um, doing the deal. Alright, so one of you uh, one of you car guys here let's see if you can so there's the mystery engine for the week, okay, so maybe you guys can ID that engine uh, that Johnny Mechanic's working on there. Um, so, oh, what does this say? Check the spec before you start, okay? That's Mr. Bozo. That's Mr. Bozo there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that was my little uh, Craigslist uh, uh, purchase there. And Paul, thank you very much for, uh, for doing business. Okay, and then the, uh, the last one here is, this is for my buddy Stan down south, uh, Bar Z Industrial Development. If you haven't checked out Stan's channel, go check it out. Stan's doing some cool stuff. He sent me some more of these decimal charts because uh, uh, my wife uh, glommed a couple of these and uh, so he took pity on me and uh, ran a few more copies and laminated them for me so thanks Stan appreciate that um, he also sent some fudge and uh, that uh, got destroyed immediately I uh, I took it to work because I knew I would just nibble at it here at the shop and uh, the cannibals at work uh, uh, mowed it uh, in pretty short order so Stan it was it was wonderful and uh, uh, we managed to pass the uh, um, the heavy equipment uh, <laughs> random drug test uh, after uh, eating that fudge, so uh, it's all good. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think I know what this is too. So now Stan is an awesome rapper. This guy can, you know, he can wrap a battleship and uh, and uh, make it secure. So uh, and for those of you that haven't tried it, uh, stretch wrap is just a wonderful. Uh, uh, a wonderful material. It, it tensions everything, it gives a little bit of padding and keeps everything together, you know, especially odd shaped stuff. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't tried it, um, you should uh, get yourself a little roll of stretch wrap. It, uh, it actually works really good. Now, Stan had some, uh, there we go, some grinder handles. Oh, actually, I kind of like that one. Um, yeah, same thread. I think that's the thread that's on the grinder. This has got a, uh, kind of a long shank on it, but uh, uh, we'll have to try it on that Bosch grinder. Anyway, thanks for the uh, thanks for the goodies, Stan. Always appreciated. And uh, you guys, if you haven't uh, checked out Stan's YouTube channel, uh, go check it out. Uh, Shaden HKW, and um, uh, buy some of his little Z squares for a friend for uh, Christmas. Talk to you guys later. Okay, so we're gonna try out um, this uh, variable speed Bosch grinder here. And uh, I put uh, one of the handles Stan sent me on here. And uh, we're gonna do a little, a little cleaning on this face here and see what, uh, what we can do on that. Um, this has a, uh, a side switch. I, I generally prefer a paddle, but uh, with the variable speed, that's probably a, a problem. So let's uh, let's try it here. Well, that 
that's the lowest speed. Looks like you can kind of work as slow as you want to work uh, uh, with that variable speed. It's real controllable. But uh, I got a little more to go there. There's some pits that we got to dig out of there, but uh, uh, that's kind of what it looked like when we started. Anyway, that's that, that dead blow hammer. That's pretty nice. All right. Well, let me uh, let me uh, do a little more there. Actually, you know what? You guys are. This isn't very good video, so uh, I'll clean this all up and I'll go in the hammer rack and you'll see it from time to time. Anyway, Stan, thanks for the handle. Rick, thanks for the grinder. And Andy, thanks for the hammer. Right on, guys. Thank you. Well, I thought I was done here. And uh, so I, I did a little cleaning on this. I cleaned the handle some and then uh, did a little work on the face and kind of cleaned this, uh, this handle up. Well, I went to put it away and it's at the small end of the hammer rack and this little Williams was in there too. And this was sent to me from um, uh, John down at uh, PTC Instruments. He uh, uh, was feeding the delinquency of a, a hammer attic. But what struck me is just how close these are um, if you look at the head here, so it has a slightly pointed uh, uh, peen end, and uh, this is a, basically a spitting image of that. And then look at the uh, uh, this shape here, the shape, and then in particular also if you look at the ends, um, the, the proportions are almost identical, okay? And then look at the handle. So it's got the same kind of nice waist in the handle of this. This is a brand new hammer here. I don't, I'm not sure where he bought it, but uh, or maybe he had it, I don't know. So what leads me to believe here, now there, there, you can see some parting lines here in the forgings here uh, that are a little bit different than this, but uh, there's enough similarities here proportionally. They're just too close to be coincidental, I think. Um, it's possible that this company here and this company are related somehow. So uh, let, me, uh, let me turn now so you guys can see that. Uh, double check and make sure yeah, you guys can see all that. So uh, these are very, very close. The, uh, the lengths the lengths are, uh, so what do we got there? So that's about two inches. That's two inches. I mean, they're just, they're just brother and sister, if nothing else, right? I don't know. Um, maybe somebody knows a little bit about that, that Williams and the, the I, can't, I can't remember, uh, Hairbrand, Hairbrand or Hairbrand, so um, there's the name. Um, maybe somebody knows a little something about that, kind of cool.